Do you think Canada is headed in a similar direction that we are using highly paid consultants and friends of the prime minister rather than the people who should be able to do the work themselves? Mrs. Kusi, please go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much to our witnesses for being here today. Mr. Chair, we are here, of course, to discuss federal government consulting contracts awarded to McKinsey and Company. And this is an issue, as you know, we've been looking at for some time. Um, I do believe, however, one of our significant conclusions in doing this large study on McKinsey was the inexplicable fact of the implication of Mr. Dominic Barton. So this is something that the official opposition focused on significantly was the implication of Mr. Barton in his efforts with this government to, to run the government. However, Mr. Chair, we now have a new player, lo and behold, the new and latest advisor to the Prime Minister, Mr. Chair, Mr. Mark Carney. Carbon tax Carney, if you will, conflict of interest Carney, if you will, Mr. Chair. And for those of you who are listening who don't, do not know Mr. Carney, I'd like to read an excerpt from McLean's. Carney strides down the hall, beaming and vigorous, a man who looks born to inhabit the slimmest, silkiest Seville Row suit that Sterling can buy. With a much publicized pay packet of $1.7 million, he can well afford it. Young aides scurry around him, clutching files, checking encrypted phones, trying and failing to keep up with their 54-year-old boss. Much has been written about Carney's good looks, but in person, it's not so much the symmetry of his face that's remarkable as the way he moves, which is fast with the loose-limbed precision of a dancer, Mr. Chair. Perhaps he'd like to try some Bollywood with the Prime Minister sometime. But his ties to McKinsey, Mr. Chair, are also clear and evident. I have here the schedule from COP28. McKinsey at COP28, insights from our events. How can we deploy climate finance at a scale? McKinsey's Cindy Levy and uh, Joseba Esia led a discussion on closing this net zero finance gap with carbon tax Carney, Mark Carney, UN Special Envoy for Climate Action and Finance. So this is the first implication. I mentioned the tie-in, Mr. Chair, of his good friend, Dominic Barton. We have here uh, in the same McLean's article a quote which says, he makes no effort to hide what his friend, Dominic Barton, former McKinsey chief and now Canadian ambassador to China. And I'll also add, Mr. Chair, that um, lo and behold, it was Mark Carney who took the place after Dominic Barton of uh, the advisory chair of the economic growth group that the prime minister put together. He described Mark Carney as the giant computer sitting on top of his head. So indeed, these two are very good friends. As well, this McLean's article points to a part-time gig performed by Mr. Carney, um, where he was paid the sum of $1 U.S. per year. Sounds very similar to the amount that Dominique Barton was, in fact, paid to lead this uh, economic growth group. But I think the most relevant piece here today, Mr. Chair, is uh, Mark Carney, in his role as the head of the Bank of England, the chair of the Bank of England, called in, who else? McKinsey but to overhaul the process at the the, the uh, Bank of England. I have this uh, news report here. Mark Carney has called in U.S. management consultants McKinsey to oversee a shakeup of the Bank of England strategy to impose a radical makeover on the old lady of Threadneedle Street. Again, I point to the relationship between Mark Carney and Dominique Barton. Again, someone who's been inextricably tied to McKinsey, McKinsey's implication in the running of this government. When its managing director, Carney's fellow Canadian Dominique Barton, was asked in a recent interview with Management Today if he knew conflict of interest Carney, he replied, yes, he's a great guy, a tri-sector athlete, public sector, private sector, and government. He's fully rounded, gets in debate, a great signal that the UK gets talented people in from abroad. Talented people, Mr. Chair? Are people connected to McKinsey? That's my question here today. So, uh, Mr. Mills, my first question is, in 2013, when Mark Carney was the governor of the Bank of England, one of his first decisions was to use McKinsey to completely overhaul the bank's organization, as I indicated. Based on your experience with McKinsey and your opinion, is it a good idea to allow an outside organization such as McKinsey and not public servants to completely overhaul government systems? Um. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the question. Um, I would not be able be well placed to uh, answer whether that was advisable in that circumstance. But I, I would say that if you were to do a major transformation of any organization, you'd want to have a plurality of views and perspectives to get the best result. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Madame Boudreau, I'll continue with you. A former member of the Bank's Monetary Policy Committee uh, at the time said, it's not clear what the government is getting from the highly priced Carney who is supposed to do this, th this stuff himself. Do you think Canada is headed in a similar direction? We've seen a lot of unrest from the public service lately. Displeasure with this government. Displeasure with your minister, Anita Anand, who is, of course, responsible for the Treasury Board and the public service. Do you think Canada is headed in a similar direction that we are using highly paid consultants and friends of the prime minister rather than the people who should be able to do the work themselves? Thank you for the question. And like we... Um, share with the committee uh, at few occasions. It's always a question to see if we have in-house the capacity to do the work. And when it's not the case, we have some needs to go outside and have the proper um, skills that we need in order to advance the priorities. Thank you, Dominique Barton. And now, uh, conflict of interest, carbon tax, Carney, Mr. Chair, tied to McKinsey. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mrs. Kusi. Mr. Kusmerchuk, please, for six minutes.